Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take this image and turn it into this composite. We're going to cover basic skin retouching, frequency separation, background replacement, how to create the halo effect, and also some basic color grading. Now, this is a bit of an advanced tutorial, so if you're having trouble with it, I suggest you look at some of the other videos on my channel. You can also check out my Photoshop Basics for Photographers course on Nucle.com. That's five hours of training, which basically takes someone who's never opened Photoshop and gets them to the point where they know the basics that they'll need as a photographer to use Photoshop for retouching of all kinds. Um, if you do that course, I can assure you that this tutorial will be at your level. All right, having said all that, let's get started. All right, so first let's go to File, Open. We're gonna open the Mahalat 16 DNG. Let's go ahead and open that. And it's gonna open in Camera Raw because it is a Camera Raw image. And I'm not gonna do much uh, in Camera Raw primarily because uh, the photo as taken is pretty nice and we're gonna be doing a lot of retouching in Photoshop. All right, so the only thing I'm going to do here is just neutralize it. I'm going to select this gray eyedropper, which is the white balance tool, and just select that background. You're going to see that's going to turn everything neutral, which is what I want. And down here, I'm going to click on this down here, and I want to change this to 16-bit depth so we can get the most out of this image. Let's go ahead and hit OK and open image. All right, so we now have the image in Photoshop. Um, I know right away that I'm gonna to wanna to move her to the center of the image. Now, rather than uh, cutting her out and moving her, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna extend this half of the image to the right so that we have her where we want her. So let's go ahead and select the crop tool. I'm gonna to do four by five. Um, that's kind of the preferred format for Instagram. So let's go ahead and just kind of extend this out so that her eyes here are kind of in the middle between these two. And we have about equal distance between her left side here and her right side. So that looks pretty good. Let's hit OK. <clears throat> now I am going to want to put a halo around her, so I may want to just move her up a little bit. So let's go ahead and recrop just a little bit. Now, you'll notice that this delete cropped pixels is checked. I actually don't want that um, because I want to be able to adjust my crop afterwards. So let's hit escape and let's go in our history, just go back to open, turn that off, and let's do our crop again. And this time I want to extend it, but I'm going to extend it up a little bit and just move it down so that this hand is still in the shot. So probably right about there I think looks good. Um, that looks about centered in terms of where she is. And because I turned this off, we can adjust that a little bit if we want to. All right, so there you go. We now have her cropped. <clears throat> Next thing I want to do is I want to take some of this information from the left side here and just transfer it to there. So let's go ahead and make a copy of this layer. I'm going to do that with Command J and then go in our move tool, do Command T for transform and flip horizontal. Just going to move this to there and then drag it behind there. So there you go. We've kind of um, put that there. We might even adjust, do Command M for a curve and just adjust this a little brighter so it better matches here. And that's pretty good there, that's good enough. I'm actually gonna paint a lot of this background and replace it entirely, so I'm not too worried. But if we can start with a pretty good approximation there, that's always gonna help us. Okay, so let's go ahead, add a new layer. We'll call this background replacement. And I'm just gonna use a soft brush here. Soft round pressure, opacity and flow. We're gonna make that a little bigger and then hold down option to select our background color here. 
and just start painting. Now, I don't want it to go in her. I have to be careful of that. So let's just make sure our brush stays away from her. And there, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to add a mask on here and just using a black brush on the mask, just kind of paint out around here just to make sure that she's not being encroached by any of our edge painting there. And that looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and just flatten all this onto one layer so we can work on one layer. To do that, I'm going to make a new layer and then do Shift Option Command E and that's going to merge everything into one layer. All right, now the next thing I want to do is actually start cleaning up her skin. Now before I do frequency separation, I first want to go through and just fix up any of the more glaring spots on her skin so that the frequency separation does as little work as possible. And I think that's uh, a good route when you're doing skin cleanup is to always try to do as little as possible so that it doesn't look uh, it doesn't end up having that kind of plastic look which you can sometimes get from frequency separation i'm also going to show you um, how to do s frequency separation in a way that um, people shouldn't really be able to tell that you did it all right so let's go ahead and clean up all the spots for that i'm just using the healing brush tool um, you can change the size of your brush like you do any other brush, holding down Control and Option and dragging left and right. And I'll just fast forward through this. And I'm pretty happy with that. You can see a quick before and after there. Those are the kind of things I like to clean up before I do any frequency separation. The other thing I want to do is I want to just punch up the eyes a bit. And this is something I do with pretty much any uh, portrait that I take is you just want to punch up those eyes a bit. You want to punch up the color of the eye and also the catch light in the eye. So let's go ahead and make a new layer. I'm going to put this layer on overlay and then I'm going to select my brush. And what I want is the soft round pressure brush here, the same one we were using priorly. I'm going to make it significantly smaller, uh, right around 30 pixels. And then I'm going to take the flow and reduce that to something really low, like 5%. And what that means is each time I run my brush, it's going to put 5% down. So if I run it this way and then run it back down, we'll have 10%. If I run it again, it'll be 15% as opposed to opacity, where no matter how many times I go across it, um, it's going to stay 5% until I let go, click, and start brushing again. So basically, that's the difference between flow and opacity, is with flow, the more I brush, the more opaque it's going to start becoming. Right, so I haven't let go. Now I let go, and you can see how much it is. Now, if I change this to 100 and change this to 5% and do exactly the same thing, uh, you'll notice that it never gets past 5%. I have to click, do it again, click, do it again, click, do it again, click, do it again to finally get the same result. So Let's do Command A and Delete, delete those. I also want my color here to be white, so I'm going to hit D on the keyboard to default those to black and white, and then X to change my foreground and background color. All right, so let's change this back to 100 and 5, and then we're just going to start painting in here. Now, our layer is already on overlay, so it's right away you can see it's getting that look that I want, and I'm just going to hit the bottom of the iris here, or the uh, retina, or whatever it's called, and the catch light. And there you go. And if that's too strong, which this probably is, we can just take the opacity of this layer down until it looks natural. 
and I would say right around 45% looks good. All right, so now that we've done all that, I'm gonna make a new layer and again, merge everything up. This just allows me to have multiple layers and I can always go back if I need to. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is frequency separation. And to do that, we're gonna make three cop or two copies of this layer. So we have original artwork. We're gonna make another copy called blurred. And then we're gonna make another layer called high frequency. And essentially what we're doing with frequency separation is we're separating the high frequency, meaning the high contrast or the texture on top of the image. And we're separating that from the base colors and the base contrast. By doing that, we can then blur the base while leaving the high frequency, the texture on top, intact. So we can get rid of anomalies in skin while leaving the skin texture so we avoid that plastic look. All right, so to do that, we're going to turn off the high frequency layer and on the blurred layer, what we wanna do is we wanna blur out the high frequency. So let's go to blur, Gaussian blur, and we wanna Gaussian blur that just until we don't see the skin texture anymore. So here you can see, we see the skin texture there and we can zoom in a little bit. And as we increase our blur, to about 3.3% there, 3.3 pixels, you can see we no longer have that skin texture. We're gonna hit okay. Now, if you do it too much, the high frequency layer is not gonna be able to get that detail back in. So be, be cautious of how much you blur this layer. You don't wanna do more than three or four pixels. All right, next, we're gonna to go to our high frequency layer and we're gonna to go to image apply image, we want to make sure our layer here is our original artwork. We want to invert and then we want to go down to add and we want to put the scale at two. Now, sorry, we want our layer to be blurred, not original artwork. We want it to be that blurred layer. So here you can now see that high frequency coming in. So let's hit OK. We're going to put this on linear light. And now if we put these two layers in their own group with Command G and call this frequency separation, if I turn this on and off, you should see no difference. No difference between the frequency separation, the two layers that make the frequency separation, and the layer below it. So if you do see a difference, it simply means you've blurred this too much and you need to take that blur down. All right, so now that we've blurred it, what we're gonna do is do Command J and we're gonna call this corrected. And this is where we're going to start correcting this background image. So to do that, I'm gonna go to brushes and I'm actually gonna select the mixer brush. And here I want it to be a clean brush and I want it to, I don't want it to load the brush and I do want it to clean the brush each time. So I'm gonna turn this one off, leave this one on. I want the wetness to be around 20%. I want the load to be almost nothing. So let's say 5%. And then I want the mix to be about 20% and I want the flow to also be around 20%. So those are kind of my starting settings. We can adjust this, these if we want to, but essentially what this is gonna do, if I turn off the high frequency, you're gonna see that it's gonna start blending the colors together. So rather than, you may have seen in other tutorials, selecting an area and doing a Gaussian blur, I don't really like that because it doesn't give me enough control. Doing it this way gives me control because I can brush where I want the blur to be. I can also change the size of my mix brush to get smaller areas and so forth. So let's go ahead and undo that and turn our high frequency back on. What I'm going to do now is with that high fre frequency turned on, I'm just going to start painting these skin areas 
and I'm going to follow the contours of her face. And you're going to see that her skin is starting to clean up. And you want this to be relatively subtle. And also, I set the flow to pretty low so that I can just kind of brush a lot without it doing a lot. Um, if you have the flow too high, you'll notice that each time you make a brush stroke, you'll uh, create too much blur. So having that blur set to a pretty low number is going to help a lot when you do frequency separation. So right away you can see how much nicer her skin looks there. And really we didn't have to do much. We didn't have to do much brushing. And also you'll notice I can make my brush smaller and target smaller areas. So this really nice aspect of doing uh, frequency separation is using this uh, mix brush method. So there you can see I'm pretty happy with that. Now I can take the opacity down and we can see kind of the before and after and you can see now if I do before and after you can see oh well her skin does look a little bit plastic. So what I always do when I do frequency separation is take the opacity down to about 70%. So there it's cleaning up, but you still have some of the imperfections from the original skin and that kind of uh, prevents you from getting that overly retouched look. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So there you have it. We have her pretty much cleaned up how we want her to look. And the next thing we're going to do is add the halo and also replace the background. So let's go ahead and make another layer on top. We're going to do Shift, Option, Command, D, merge everything again. And I'm going to go to any of my quick selection tools and I'm going to get this option, select subject. So I'm going to click on that and then go to select and mask. Now this has already done a really good job of cutting her out of the background. Certainly good enough for what we need. Um, the one thing I'm going to do is go to the refine edge and just paint this edge where her hair meets the background. That's going to give us a little more realistic cutout of her hair there. Otherwise, I'm actually pretty happy with that cutout. Now one thing I always do uh, when I've made one of these auto selections or used one of the smart selection tools is increase this edge detection and smart radius. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to turn this on and add about three pixels. And you're going to notice on this edge and on this edge that it, that's just going to clean it up a bit, uh, make it a little bit match more the original image. So there you go. All right, let's do Command J. That's going to make a layer out of her. And now what we can do is go to File, Place Embedded, and in the same folder you're going to see a Grunge JPEG. I'm just going to put this in here and stretch it so it's the same size. And then I'm going to put this on Soft Light. Now it's adding too much blue, so what I'm going to do is go to Image, Adjustments, and the Black and White. And we're just going to get rid of the color there. Hit OK. Um, I kind of think that I don't want this to be all the color gone because I do like some of the color. What I can do is go to my Properties panel here, fill this mask with black. And now, there you go. All right, so now I can adjust how much color that has. So 30% looks pretty good. All right, good. So I'm happy with that. The next thing we're going to do is create the halo. So let's make a layer on top of here. And <clears throat> I'm going to just hold down kind of I want the halo to originate almost in the center of her face here. So holding down option will make the circle uh, start from the midpoint and then holding down shift is going to keep it circular. And I think right about there is good. I may want to center it up just a little bit. Kind of actually like it directly in the center of the frame there. That's pretty nice. 
I want to make sure my foreground color is white. I want to make sure I'm on my layer here that has nothing on it. Call that halo. I'm going to go to edit stroke and I want this to be about 30 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe a little too thick. So let's command Z and do that again. Let's do it 25. Pretty happy with that. Okay, next we're going to put this behind her. Let's see what that does. So I like what it's doing with the hair there, but I do want it in front of her here. So let's put it back in front of her, select the transparency of this layer, which I'm going to do by holding command and clicking on the thumbnail, and then holding down option, I'm going to add a mask. And by holding down option, the mask is going to invert my selection before creating the mask. So now the last thing I want to do is I want the halo to go in front of this cloth, but behind her hair. So to do that, I essentially want to make a quick mask. Well, here, let's just do it. Let's go to channels first. We're going to go see which of these channels has the greatest separation between her hair and this white cloth. And it looks like the blue channel. So now I'm going to hold down command again, click on the blue channel, and that's going to make a selection of the blue channel. Next, I'm going to hit Q for quick mask. Now here, what I want to do is I want to double click on the quick mask. I want to change the color of it to something a little more obnoxious and change it to 100. So now you can see which parts of that mask are fully selected. And you can see here where it's not as much green. And then where it's fully green, that means there's no selection. So essentially what I want to do is I want to adjust it so that this part here turns white. So to do that, I'm going to do Command M. It's going to make a curve. And I want to bring up the curve. So right about there. And then I'm going to bring the bottom of the curve right about there. And let's hit OK. And let's go back here. On our mask, let's hit Q. Let's go on our mask. And I just want to paint with a white brush. I want to basically just paint this. Let's turn up our flow here. Paint this right there like that. And there you go. It's kind of behind our hair, but in front of that. That's where I want it. All right, so we have our halo built. I'm going to convert this to a smart object. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make some copies of this. Let's make the first copy, and we're going to rasterize this one. And we're going to call this Glow. And I'm going to make one more copy, Command-J. And I'm going to go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we're going to make this a really high number, like 250. So you can't even see it anymore. It's just kind of glowing the background a bit. So let's name this 250. We're going to go back to our original glow, make another copy, and we're going to go to Gaussian Blur. And this time we're going to go half of this, so 125. And call this one 125. Make another copy. And this time we're going to do it half of that, or close to half. So let's say 65. Actually, let's make it 60. Make it easier on ourselves. And then next one, you guessed it, is going to be 30. And basically, we're just continuing to half these. So each time, we're halving the amount of blur. Not going to do quite half there. I'm going to just do 10 and then 5. 
All right, so you can see that has kind of a nice halo effect. Now what I'm going to do is take everything from 10 to 250 and do Command E to merge it into one layer. We're going to call this Blue Glow. We're going to put this layer on screen and then do Command U for hue saturation. We're going to turn on Colorize and I want to turn up the saturation to 100. Change the color to a nice blue color and then take down the lightness to about minus 50. So right about there, maybe adjust this to be a little more of a turquoisey blue like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of that layer so that there's two blue glows. And there you go. We've got a really nice halo effect there. Last thing I want to do is I want this to kind of splash a little bit on top of her hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one more copy of this. Uh, we can do that with Command J or just dragging the layer down while holding Shift. We'll also make another copy of the layer. And I want to move this. So I'm going to do Command T, put my anchor point here, and then just kind of turn this so that it's going on top of her hair there. And then I'm going to use the warp tool and just kind of push this around, I'm trying to keep my point there where it matches and then otherwise just kind of wrapping it around her head a little more. So something like that. Let's hit OK. And let's hit E for erase. I'm going to make this bigger and just erase up to there like that. And then I'm going to blur this a little more. Let's blur it until it's just kind of a light fog on top of her hair, like that. And then I'm going to double click on this. We'll call this hair glow. And with the layer styles, you're going to see this blend if. And basically what I want to do is I want to make it so that it's not affecting the dark parts of her hair. It's just where the light on her hair is hitting. So by dragging this to the right, you can see I'm getting rid of it in the dark parts, but it's leaving the highlights. Now it's obviously clipping. And to fix that, we're going to hold down option and separate these two. So just like that. Said OK. And I'm going to drag this layer all the way down to on top of her and then holding down option between the two layers. I'm going to clip it to this so that it's not spilling onto our background there. So there you can see it's just on her hair. So I'm happy with that. And then finally, I want to add some blue highlights or reflectors in her eyes. So I'm going to make another copy of this and we'll call this eye reflection. And what I want to do is command T for transform, make that a bit smaller, kind of turn it. And then in here, oops, make it, oops, go right about there and holding down option I'm just going to click and drag that's going to make a copy I'll put one in the other eye too that's a little subtle thing but I think it helps so there you go I'm pretty happy with that and Finally, I want to make it so that the background kind of reflects what's happening here, meaning there should be more light around this area and it should get darker as it goes out. So what we're going to do is go on our elliptical marquee, kind of hold down option and just start making a circle from here to about there. And we can drag this down. So right about there is kind of where I want it to be lighter. So now I want to turn this into a vignette. So to do that, I'm going to hit Q and that's going to show me 
my selection as a quick mask. So, or you can click on this button here that turns on our quick mask. I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Just blur this until it looks like a vignette. Right about there. And then hit Q again. Now you can see it's transferred that information back into my selection. And I can just move that up like that. This is just with a curve layer here. And I'm pretty happy with that in terms of the look and the feel. Now the last thing I want to do is take this and I'm going to drag this all the way to the top holding down option so it makes a copy. And then I'm going to invert this. So now the mask is selecting the background rather than the circle area. And then in my mask, I'm going to make this darker rather than lighter. So here you can see we're making the same area around her darker, but we're also including her inside that curve, which is why I dragged this up here. Now I don't want to go all the way dark, but somewhere around there I think looks really nice. Um, there you can see the before and after. It just kind of contains the image more and directs your focus more toward her face. So that looks pretty good there. And the last thing I want to do now is add some sharpness to it. Um, if you're going to post an image on the internet where it's going to be shown at a smaller size, I think it's always a good idea to add a sharpness layer. So I'm going to do Shift Option Command E. That's going to merge everything into one layer. Then we're going to go to Filter, Other, High Pass. And if you remember our frequency separation layer, you'll notice that this is quite similar to frequency separation layer creation. So basically, we're creating a layer that just has our high frequency. Now for this, I'm going to go a little bit higher than the 3.3 that we use for frequency separation. I'm going to go to 5. Hit OK. And then we can put this on Overlay. And you can see that's given us a nice sharpness. Here's the before, there's the after. Now, if you really want to punch the sharpness, you can put this on linear light. Now, personally, I think that's just too much. But you can also take the opacity down if you'd like to somewhere around 50%. It's still going to be stronger than using um, overlay at 100%, but you kind of have that option there. You can always move it up more in opacity if you want it to be sharper. Sometimes I'll just sharpen around the eyes. So rather than doing an opacity, what you can do is add a mask, fill the whole mask with black, and then in your properties panel, just take the density down to 50. So that's doing exactly the same thing as changing your opacity, but you have a slider control here and you can make parts of it 100%. So by using a white brush, I can just hit the eyes and that'll make the eyes sharper. I could also just hit, you know, a few parts of her hair, maybe her lips, um, you know, anything that I want sharper, I can just hit with the white brush. So this gives you a little more control when you're adding a sharpness layer. Also, if there's parts of the image that you don't want sharpened, you can always go with a black brush and make those completely gone. All right, so there you have it. Pretty happy with that. What I might do is just add a little bit of a color grade on top. I think this image doesn't really need it, to be honest. The blue and um, her skin tone are really the only colors in the image, so we already have it pretty nice and neutral. But let's say we wanted to maybe add a little bit of coolness to the shadows and a little more warmth to the highlights. What I would do is I would just do that with a curve layer probably go to my blue, maybe raise up the bottom a little bit like that and take down the bottom. That's going to give us that nice blue yellow look. And also in the red, I might just take down in the shadow areas a tiny bit. That's going to give us more cyan. And then in the highlights, just a little bit up. And maybe on this curve also, just 
do that a little bit like that. So there you can see the before and after. It's pretty subtle. Finally, I might just brighten up the whole thing a little bit and also make the shadows just a little darker. So a little less curved, give that a little more contrast. Something like that. Let's see before and after. I think that's pretty nice. All right, and there you have it. There you can see what we started with and our final image. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Here are some other videos that you can check out in the meantime, and I will see you next time.